Today's episode, we're gonna break down soy and paraffin wax, and I'm gonna give you a framework to look at these two things through a lens, and I'll offer you an opinionated view into which wax I think is better. In today's episode, we're gonna break down soy versus paraffin wax. This is a debate that seems to rage across candle making forums all the time, but the thing is, we never seem to come to this conclusive result as to which wax is better, and that should give us a clue that really it depends on what you're doing. But let's take a look at the debate from an honest look, and I'm gonna take an approach today that's a little bit different than what you might see on most other channels or in discussions or other internet posts, and that is we're gonna apply a framework to look at each of these waxes through a lens, combat them head to head to see where they both shine, where they're equal and where they may fall short. And the difference here is that although my opinion is my own, the framework is completely up to you to apply what you believe to each category. So I'll try to supply you with the best knowledge I have on each wax, totally disconnected from too much of an opinion, although that's kind of impossible to remove, and then we can come to some sort of resolution. Which wax is better, or which wax is better when might be the better question. So. First up, I wanna give you the framework, that, and it's called the four quadrant analysis. And the four quadrants follow the life cycle of every candle. So the first quadrant is sourcing, actually getting a hold of that wax. The second quadrant is making, actually creating something from that wax. The third is selling, actually getting that candle in the hands of a customer. And the fourth is burning, the actual lighting of the wick, the thing that we do it all for and how parts of that category might stack up with each wax. So let's go back to the first quadrant, sourcing. Now sourcing, like I said, it kind of applies to getting a hold of the right wax at a good price in a competitive way. And I break it down with four subcategories. Now the first is availability. Now availability talks about you know how easy is it to get a hold of the wax you need. And Paraffin is widely available. Almost anywhere in any developed country, you can buy paraffin wax to make candles. But soy wax has not yet reached that level of maturity, as far as I understand. Or, if it's available, it's actually kind of expensive, or the quality suffers a little bit. Now, not to say you can't get soy wax in a lot of places, especially if you're willing to pay a lot for shipping, but I'm kind of talking about local sourcing of that materials. So I give a slight nod to paraffin in the way that it's more available. But the second part of sourcing is what I call format. Is what is that wax like when you get it? Paraffin comes in blocks. It comes in kind of a gel format. And soy wax almost always comes in a flake format or uh, even beads. And when you are measuring out that wax for your application, soy wax is so much easier to get a lot more accuracy, a lot more precision because it's smaller quantity. With a block, you have to break it up. So as far as format goes, I'd say that soy wax is a lot easier to work with. So the third part of sourcing is market variety. Now, soy wax is a cool wax. I enjoy making stuff out of it, but nothing really compares to paraffin. You can find a paraffin wax that applies to just about any specific application that you want. For instance, you can find a paraffin wax that is made for decorations. You can find a paraffin wax that's made for wax melts. You can find a paraffin wax that's made for pillars. You can find one that's made for votives, and on and on and on. Now, soy wax, because of some of its properties, really isn't cut out for a lot of the same things. And so you don't find a big area in the market for those different specialty types, right? We make containers when we make wax melts out of it. We don't make much else out of it. And there's a few other reasons, but a lot of it comes back to the properties of the wax. So I have to give a nod to paraffin for the market availability. Now the final quadrant in sourcing is price. How much are you gonna pay for that wax and it's extremely competitive. If you're buying about 50 pounds at a time because these are both coming from commodity markets, the prices are gonna average about $1.50 to $1.60 per pound, depending on where you go and depending on what wax. And this doesn't include shipping and this doesn't include buying enormous amounts. 
So pricing is fairly neck and neck, although soy does come out a little bit less expensive per pound than paraffin when I last looked. Admittedly, fourth quarter of 2020 might be a little different than the future, but that's kind of where we're at today. So overall, in this first quadrant, I would say that paraffin has a little bit of an edge. I'd say that getting hold of the paraffin that you need at a price that you want is a little bit easier with paraffin, depending on where you are in the world. And soy is an extremely close second. So the second quadrant in this four quadrant analysis is making. And making refers to actually creating that candle. And I've broken it down into four subcategories as follows. Workability, shelf life, colors, and fragrance oil. Let's start with the first one, workability. Now we know that paraffin wax comes from the oil industry as a byproduct of what is called slack wax. If you wanna read more about that, check out the links in the description. But as a result of the processes that make paraffin wax what it is, it's a very stable material. It doesn't really misbehave in a lot of ways that you don't expect. Compare that to soy wax, which comes from soybeans, which are squeezed for their oil and then they're hydrogenated, brought up to a solid, and add a bunch of things that make it a lot more candle friendly. And soy wax can really be a miscreant. Just think about it. We make soy wax out through the same process that we create margarine. It's a little weird, but the point is this. If you've ever worked with soy wax, you know that its polymorphic behavior can be a huge downer sometimes. It can create craters, it can create frosting. There's a lot of things that are a little more difficult to deal with soy wax. Not to say that paraffin is perfect. Paraffin will deal with adhesion issues. You sometimes have to pour a second time because it will divot right in the middle, but right? it's got its drawbacks as well. But I think overall, paraffin's more predictably dangerous than soy wax, if that makes any sense. The second subcategory of making is what I call shelf life. And not that a lot of us are hopefully holding on to wax for such a long time that we have to think about this, but how long does each wax last if you were just gonna hold on to it or if you made a candle out of it and let it sit for a long time? Well, it goes back to the origins as well. Because paraffin comes from the oil industry, it's a lot more stable, it's gonna last a lot longer. I think a lot of it depends on your storage conditions, but if you think about soy wax and going back to the margarine example, right, there is an end of life on those things. And best estimate I can give you is that most soy wax has about a year before you get to deal with unexpected behaviors when you make a candle out of it or when you burn it. If you're making anything out of it a year after you bought those supplies, then it's unlikely that you're gonna make a very repeatable good process that you can bake into your system. The third part of making is just blatantly called colors. And it really comes down to how well does that wax hold on to the color that you desire? Or another way to ask that is, how well does the color you want come out in that wax? Now paraffin, just the base paraffin amount, is relatively not too colorful. It doesn't carry too much of its own weight. and as a result of that, the dyes that you add to it end up looking pretty close to what they want. They're pretty true. But soy wax is this kind of opaque, milky white color at the base. And if you mix any color with an opaque, milky white color, it's gonna tone down that colorful color. It's gonna tone down that color a little bit just because you're mixing white with it. And so a lot of the dyes that we use in soy wax come out a little more muted than they do in paraffin. And so I'm gonna give the slight edge to paraffin in the color category. If you're looking to build a vibrant color line, it's likely you're gonna get a better result with paraffin. Not to say you can't build anything out with soy, but you're looking at a more pastel color palette at that point. And the fourth and final part of making is fragrance oil. And this, really comes down to a little bit of the physical properties of both waxes. You see, paraffin is less dense than soy, and therefore, when those aromas are in the air, they will travel farther. They're just lighter, that's all. It's just easier to get them to travel a farther distance. Now, soy is more dense, so it's heavier. It'll fall to the ground faster, and I know we can't see this with our eyes, but that is what's happening. It's easier to understand with this simple comparison. Most fragrance oils that work well in paraffin 
will not necessarily work well in soy, but most fragrance oils that work well in soy will work well in paraffin. I hope that makes sense. So in the making quadrant, I would also give a slight edge to paraffin. It behaves better, it deals with colors a little bit better, and you generally have better fragrance oil performance in a paraffin wax compared to a soy candle that is similar. The third quadrant is probably my favorite, and that's selling. What are the difficulties and challenges with getting those particular waxes into the hands of your customers? And here's where I'll just straight up say, I believe it's a tie. Yes, you get a slight edge in pricing material cost with soy wax, but typically you're not really talking about wax as much as you are when you're selling it to a customer. And another part of that is that I believe that as candle makers, we focus so much on parts of the process that customers typically don't care about. And I'm not saying they all don't care about this, but I think that we get hung up on things like the soy versus paraffin wax debate. I think we get hung up on things like what is safe for someone to burn. I think we get hung up on the paraffin soots and soy wax doesn't soot idea, which isn't really true in the first place. But I think that we we focus so much on those parts of the discussion, we, we miss out on things that customers actually care about, things that have nothing to do with the wax, right? There's a huge customer space that cares about, are you putting essential oils in the candle? What does that candle look like in my home, right? Candles are a big piece of home decor these days, so they don't care about the wax as much. They wanna know that what there is there. And then maybe most importantly, first and second is that, what does it smell like and can I afford it or is it a price that I wanna pay? And those ideas have nothing to do with the wax. Now they both have their markets and you'll find your people if that is the story you're telling with your product, but in general, soy versus paraffin, customers don't care. And so I'm gonna say in the selling quadrant, soy or paraffin, both winners. Now the fourth and final quadrant is burning. And this is also something I like to call performance. How well does these waxes hold up against each other when you face them head to head? And a lot of people like to say that soy wax burns longer than paraffin. And let's just say that that's true. I think there's, there's a little bit of evidence to support that. But here's why it doesn't matter. You see, soy wax, a soy wax candle that you make that is safe and performs well will not necessarily be the same design as a paraffin wax candle that you make that is safe and performs well. And here's why. Your soy wax candle has a wick that is meant to provide that correct thermal energy to that wax to melt it at a specific rate. And that rate is specific to the wax. Same with paraffin. So all things being equal, as far as you're concerned when you burn the candle, those two candles are going to be designed differently. And the properties of those really can't be compared. If you took the same wick and you put one in a soy candle, one in a paraffin candle, same everything. Yeah, sure. You're probably going to get a little more burn time out of that soy candle. But the problem with that assessment is that you're not going to get the safety and the performance sign off that you need on both of those designs. I don't know if that makes sense, but I guess what I'm saying is that no, things aren't always equal between a soy candle and a paraffin candle. You're going to design it for that candle, for that fragrance. The wax is just one of many factors. And so I'll chalk those up as equal. And the last part of burning that I want to touch on is the effect of that wax on human health. And when it comes to soy versus paraffin, there's really no good science to back up that the wax is any sort of source of harm for human health. Now, fragrance oil might be a different discussion. I think we've we've talked about that on this channel. I've written about it, you've probably seen it in other places, but that's really not anything to do with the wax. If the fragrance oils are causing an issue or essential oils are, they're, like that has nothing to do with what wax you choose to place that in. The wax is just one of many factors. So soy versus paraffin, there's really no evidence to say that any of them is more harmful to human health or animal health than the other. So let's drop that all together. And really customers just want something that's safe anyways. They don't care what the wax is. They just want something that's safe to burn in their home. So in the four quadrant analysis, we talked about sourcing, making, selling, and burning. And 
What you choose to put as criteria in those and what's important to you as a candle maker is totally up to you. I've only offered you my opinionated view into the waxes. And to sum it all up, I'll say that if you combine soy and paraffin, you get a lot of the benefits of both. Now, depending on which quadrants are most important to you, you might want to stick with one or the other, but generally speaking, it doesn't matter, right? It depends on what your what story you're trying to tell with your candles or what you're really trying to prioritize out of each of those quadrants. So if any of this was useful or interesting or helpful, give me a like. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Otherwise, I will see you in the next episode and I hope you make beautiful candles. Bye.